Hey, hello there. In this video, I'll be drawing this uh, fairly simple character and rigging it for rotation in Life 2D. You can see the finished result here. And I'll go over some of the techniques involved in creating something more sophisticated, like here. Okay, back to the beginning. So I've drawn my character here. It's not going to win any awards or anything, but we've got it. Just going to duplicate it. Now I'm going to want to create a side, front, and three-quarter version of our character. Although I think for this, I'll probably not do the three-quarter drawing at all. I'll just go with a front and a side view. It's, it's simple enough that it won't really matter. But for something... Um, well, let's just say sometimes it's worthwhile to do the three-quarter drawing as well with more detailed characters, I suppose. Oh boy, that side head. This is... <laughs> yeah. That's pretty awful looking. <laughs> well, I'm going with it. <laughs> Alright, so I was just drawing that in Corel Painter. I just like using that program. But I'm loading this up into Photoshop now. Just thickening these lines a bit. Let's give the character some color. Blue, why not? Alright, now I'm going to start separating all of the different parts onto different layers. I'll cut that eyeball out, make it its own layer, and then erase it from the head. And I'll do that for all the other parts as well. Uh, let's see what I have here. Ears, nose, mouth, uh, the neck. I think I'll leave out the pupils, or the iris, whatever you want to call it, for the example. Alright, so here I'm taking the face apart. I'm separating the nose and the mouth from the profile and then adding in that black line for the the cheek that would be behind it. All right, so that's finished now. I'll save that and load it up into Live 2D. And here's what I've got. All the different layers are over here. They have rudimentary meshes, so we're going to create an auto mesh for each of these parts. Yeah, they look good. Alright, so with those created, now I'm going to create a deformer for each of the parts. So I have to do that more manually. Just clicking on each part and creating an, uh, an appropriate deformer for it. And once I've worked my way all the way down the list here, I'll probably start grouping up those deformers into uh, parent deformers of some kind. So the eyes are attached to the head, which is attached to the neck, so you get kind of a nested structure. Alright, so I'm going to line up the side head and the front head. Yeah, I'm just setting up some of the structure that these deformers will um, fall into. Alright, I'm going to center this now. Alright, so I'm looking at this now and I'm wondering where I want to start. Which uh, part do I want to start with? Probably easiest to start with the head itself. I'll just change the transparency so you can see what I'm doing here. Alright, so I've got the side head selected, and I'm going to add keyframes for the center and the extreme left on uh, the angle Y parameter. And 
And then in the center keyframe, I just want to warp the, <clears throat> I want to warp the shape of the head. All right, there we go. Doesn't exactly look like rotation yet, but it's getting there. So here I'm going to do the exact opposite of uh, of this with the side head. I've got the front head selected. Creating a keyframe at the center position and the left position. And then in the left position, the left key, I'm going to warp the face to match the warp the uh, the uh, head the front head to match the side head. There we go. So that basic routine there is a pretty big part of the the whole thing. So I'm gonna work my way down the rest of these items. Just blending one shape into another and then and then back again. I'll speed the video up, but I'll go through the whole process. So I'm working on the eye here. It turns out that I drew one of the eyes a bit too large, so it looks a bit strange as it rotates like that. It gets a bit smaller. But for the purposes of the demonstration, it doesn't really matter. Just working my way down the parts list here. Let's work on the nose. All right, while we're speeding through this process here. I thought I'd mention the fact that I've added a keyframe in between the center and the uh, left position. And I've done that for uh, a kind of transparency crossover point. Although I'll be using it for something else later on in the video. All right, so the changeover between the front mouth and the side mouth doesn't really make any sense at all. <laughs> but I think you get the idea. You can, through a sequence of two or three images, one rotation to another. All right, so here I've got to be careful of uh, layer ordering. So I need that eye to stay behind the nose at all times. The right eye, I mean. And then the left eye has to stay on top. Alright, that should be the neck. I think it's working now. Alright, that's everything except for the ear, and I have to fix the eye. At first I thought I had that right eye too high in the layer order, but that wasn't the case. What I needed to do was raise the nose, and then raise the left eye on on top of both of them. All right, this nose transition is not going to look very good, but of all the different face parts, I think probably the nose is most deserving of having a completely separate uh, three-quarter image. Like you might be able to get away with the eyes and the ears with only two images. I mean, it really depends. Every character is different. All right, so that should be the ear in position now. We aren't gonna see it here, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. All right, there we go. Let's just fix that layer ordering for the eye, and it will be done. 
Or, well, no, actually, it won't be done. Because there's still, still one problem, <laughs> which we'll get to right now. It's a small problem and pretty easily fixed. So here's what happens. As we're rotating the head, the face, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, they're not rotating as if they were in perspective. So let me bring up a demonstration image here. Here we've got an oval on top of this uh, glass here. And we'll, I'll just use this as a representation of our situation in Live 2D. So here we've got two points. Let's say the these are our key frames for the center position and the left position. And we want to find the position for the three-quarter head. Where is the, you know, this, the, uh, the center point? Well, if we let it transform uh, linearly like it is right now, this is what we'll end up with. The so-called three-quarter point of the transformation doesn't really occur where it should. You can see here, uh, if you look at them as uh, angles or as slices or something, they're clearly not the same size. What we actually want is something that looks more like this. Just intuitively looking at this, we can tell that in perspective, the two slices look like they're the same size. We're in a good position if that's the case. So you can figure this out geometrically if you want to be really uh, uh, pedantic about it, but usually it, you can just eyeball it. And you don't really need to get all of these in between positions exactly. It's really just that three quarter position. All right, so back to our model. So how do we uh, fix this? What do we do? Well, let's select all the face parts, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and we'll create a new deformer. I'll just call it uh, nonlinear movement. So now we can slide that around. In the center keyframe, all I really need to do now is slide that over just a little bit to the left, and now it should move in a more 3D sort of way, it's in perspective. And that's the rig completed. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please check out the comments below. I used essentially all the same techniques in this video when I went to create uh, this file here. And I spent a bit more time on this, and I've got uh, upwards and downwards rotation going on as well. But beyond the the fact like this has really just more parts, more layers, there's not a lot more going on than in this basic file.